Hello, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. Everyone from your neighbor to Bursatu President Muhyiddin Yassin has shared their opinion on Nurul Iza's appointment. Some believe Anwar isn't setting a good example of good governance. Others believe Nurul will do a good job. Just moments ago, Anwar responded to critics. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has responded to heavy criticism aimed at him following the appointment of his daughter Nurul Iza as his economics and finance advisor. Speaking to reporters after the National Sports Awards ceremony this evening, he defended Nurul Iza's appointment. Dia datang untuk bantu. Kalau dia datang bantu tak ada kedudukan, akan dipersoalkan. Tidak tidak juga transparent dan proper. Jadi dia bantu dan uh, saya percaya dia pastikan eh, supaya kontrak, tender itu teratur, itu saja. Ya, bukan untuk ambil projek. Anwar added that he was willing to accept criticism from those who are sincere. For example, he said civil society groups who do not wish to see unhealthy practices return to Putrajaya. However, he said he will not be paying attention to critics who themselves have enriched their families in the past. Tapi macam yang kritik ni, termasuk yang bagi kontrak ratusan juta kepada anak dia, tak apa pula. Ada yang kerja tak ada, ada gaji tak ada kerja pun banyak juga. Ya, ada penasihat-penasihat dan buta, ada macam-macam jawatan. Jadi yang itu kita harus bezakan. He also shot down claims that Nurul Iza's appointment constitutes nepotism. Aneh. Nepotisme itu kalau kita letakkan jawatan untuk menyalahgunakan kuasa, untuk memperkayakan diri, menambah kontrak dan mendapat upah yang tinggi. Dan ini tidak berlaku. That was Anwar's response. But here's what several civil society groups had to say about Nurul Iza's appointment, beginning with C4. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's decision to appoint his daughter Nurul Iza as his economics and finance advisor puts him in a dangerous position. This is according to the Center to Combat Corruption and Cronyism, also known as C4. Its Deputy Chief Executive Officer K. Sudagaran Stanley called out the move as nepotism and a conflict of interest. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, he said the position being pro bono is irrelevant. He added that it is about nepotism and more importantly, conflict of interest. He also said this could place Anwar in a difficult and dangerous position. Elaborating, Sudagaran said that there was concern that Anwar was setting a wrong precedent by appointing a family member to fill an important position. He said there is a high expectation on the Prime Minister to lead the way and set high standards of governance. And Nurul's appointment is surely not a good governance practice. Nurul Iza received severe criticism over her new role in government after revealing it during an interview with The Star that was published on January 29th. Nurul Iza's appointment is not sitting well with many, including Transparency International Malaysia. While it notes Nurul is capable, her proximity to Anwar may raise issues of conflict of interest. Transparency International Malaysia President Muhammad Mohan has expressed concern that cronyism and nepotism are back. This is after Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim decided to appoint his daughter Nurul Iza as economics and finance advisor. Muhammad said Anwar himself has spoken extensively against nepotism and cronyism in the past, resulting in people questioning the latter's recent decision. He said Transparency International Malaysia's view is, it gives a wrong signal. It's, uh, it gives a wrong signal. Okay, it gives a wrong signal. And I'm afraid if it is not rectified, that will be factored in the perception here. Because it's all perception. So the perception today is cronism have come back, even, sorry, nepotism has slipped in. And uh, this is not good. Muhammad said this at a press conference after announcing Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index 2022 results at Royal Selangor Club. Malaysia's score has dropped for the third year in a row, scoring 47 of 100 points in the index. Malaysia's ranking in 2022 was 61. In 2021, it was 62. Muhammad said the drop is statistically significant, indicating that Malaysia is heading in the wrong direction with regard to fighting corruption, supporting human rights and democracy in the public sector. 
Meanwhile, some see the reaction to Nurul Iza's appointment as being overblown. At least, that's what one prominent economist has to say. Prominent economist Jomo Kwame Sundram has weighed in on the appointment of Nurul Iza as the pro bono advisor on economics and finance to her father, Anwar Ibrahim. According to Jomo, this is not a liability, as Nurul Iza has demonstrated sound political and policy independence throughout her political career. Speaking to The Edge, he said although Nurul Iza's appointment has courted backlash from various quarters, it does not compromise her capability of fulfilling her new responsibilities. He said while he is not keen on Nurul Iza's appointment, all things considered, the reaction to her appointment is unwarranted. He added that in an ideal world, he will not advocate this, but Nurul has a level of competency that many people do not know of. The Kazana Research Institute's senior advisor noted that Nurul's appointment would not have been as controversial if she had been chosen for the role under a different prime minister. Muhyiddin Yassin surely knows a thing or two about being prime minister, and whether you think he's in a position or not to give advice on how to do the job, he certainly has advice for Anwar. Burikata National Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin has slammed Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim for allegedly betraying the ideals of the Reformasi movement. However, Muhyiddin said there is still time for Anwar to undo the damage. In a post on Facebook, Muhyiddin said as an opposition party leader, he could take advantage of mistake after mistake that is being made by Anwar and his government. However, Muhyiddin added that as an ordinary citizen, he could not watch the nation's dignity marred by the Prime Minister's excesses. Muhyiddin urged Anwar to resign his finance minister post and focus on this task as Prime Minister. Muhyiddin also said Anwar's deputy, Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, should be ordered to take leave until his court cases have been resolved, while his daughter Nurul Iza Anwar should resign as his advisor. Muhyiddin said his successor must not repeat Najib Abdurazak's mistake. The Bersatu leader said Zahid would be a national embarrassment if he makes an official visit abroad while there are still criminal cases against him at home. The who's who of Malaysia's legal fraternity paid their last respects to a towering figure today, whose career will be a case study for years to come, Gopal Sriram. Hundreds of members of the legal fraternity today bid their final farewell to the late federal court judge Gopal Sri Ram. Private practitioners, federal court judges and deputy public prosecutors began descending on the Nirvana II Memorial Center in Kuala Lumpur as early as 8 a.m. this morning. Inside the wide hall of the center, where Sri Ram's coffin is laid, a long queue began forming early in the morning. Members of the legal fraternity and judiciary waited to pay their respects amidst the somber atmosphere. Two days ago, at 12.15 p.m., Sri Ram died at the Glen Eagles Hospital in Kuala Lumpur at the age of 79. He was previously admitted to the hospital for treatment of a lung infection. Sri Ram was leading the prosecution against Najib in the latter's ongoing 2.28 billion ringgit 1 MDB corruption trial. Where is the money, Goldman Sachs? Anwar is asking. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim is turning up the heat on Goldman Sachs, saying the 1MDB scandal would not have happened if not for the complicity of international financial institutions. Speaking to Bloomberg TV in Singapore yesterday, Anwar said it is only fair for the Wall Street Bank to fulfill its obligation by paying up its settlement. He said Goldman Sachs should be reasonable and pay what's due to the Malaysian government instead of trying to ignore its moral and financial responsibilities. He was responding to claims by Goldman that Malaysia had undervalued the assets already retrieved as part of its recovery from the scandal. According to Anwar, the 1MDB scandal is a crime committed not only against him or the Malaysian government, but against all Malaysians. He urged Goldman to come clean and settle the deal with Malaysia as 1MDB was a scandal known throughout the world and not just dismiss it by flexing the firm's financial muscle. Goldman raised 27.6 billion ringgit in 2012 and 2013 for 1MDB. 
However, a huge chunk of the funds earmarked for development ended up being looted. In October 2020, Goldman agreed to pay 12.3 billion ringgit and its Malaysian unit pleaded guilty to a corruption charge. This was to settle probes into the looting of billions of dollars from 1MDB and payment of bribes to win business for the bank. Three people who were arrested for recording the police at work during a raid at a music gig. So if the public can't record the police, can the police at least record themselves with body cams? That's the issue raised by a lawmaker. DAP lawmaker Lim Lip Eng has revived the call for the police force to be equipped with body cameras. This is following a raid on a music gig at a record store in Georgetown, Penang. The Kapong MP said body cameras were supposed to have been procured and put into use in 2021. He pointed out this was an important issue that needed to be properly looked into. He said this is because the new government prioritizes reform in the police force. Lim was commenting on the Saturday raid, which resulted in the arrest of four individuals. Of those arrested, three of them were detained for filming the incident. The three were later released. The police action caused a stir on social media on Sunday with musicians and music lovers from home and abroad weighing in on the matter. Co-owner of Rua store where the gig was held, Shaikh Fitri, said the police told them that photographing raids was not allowed and asked them to delete the photos. Lim criticized the detention of the three individuals, describing it as an act to oppress the public. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.